Chains of Domination is finally here, which means a new season of Rated PvP is upon us. And for those of you who are starting your journey as a Frost Death Knight, or even just trying to improve upon last season's results and get your first Gladiator or Rank 1 title, this video is for you. As always with new patches, it's important you're aware of exactly how to load out your class with the best everything, including race, talents, covenants, soulbinds, conduits, gear, and even macros. So sit back, relax, and enjoy as we take you through all the Frost Death Knight information you need for PvP in patch 9.1. And if you're looking for a one-stop shop to absolutely crush your opponents in this new season, look no further than Skill Caps. Over on our site, you'll find guides that perfectly follow up this entry level guide, including our upcoming world class course that will walk you through everything you need to know to bring your Frost Death Knight gameplay up to the level of a pro. Once released in the coming weeks, you'll find videos on how to deal damage, how to set up kills and win games, and exactly how to execute your specs playstyle to a standard that only the world's best players understand. In addition, weekly releases of arena commentaries allow you to keep up with the ever evolving meta and learn how to take down some of the most difficult matchups. And if that wasn't enough, skill cap members get exclusive premium access to our Discord server where you can question our team of pros with anything you need to know, all from as little as $4.99 a month. As always with your character's loadout, it begins on the starting screen with the most optimal race. Starting with the Alliance, we've got a handful of competitive options in humans, both dwarf variants, and gnomes. With humans, you gain access to the racial Will to Survive, a 3 minute cooldown stun removal. By pairing this up with a gladiator's medallion, you're effectively able to get yourself out of stuns every 90 seconds, although having access to Icebound Fortitude makes Will to Survive less valuable. The dwarf races, on the other hand, provide a valuable defensive tool in the form of Stone Form or Fire Blood to help counter the new Malediction Trinket. And last up for the Alliance, we have Gnomes which offer Escape Artist, an excellent tool for dealing with Roots and Snares. Ranking these races, we'd place Dwarves first, Gnomes second, and Humans last. This is simply because DKs primarily keep themselves alive through Death Strike, which is completely negated by the Unchained Gladiator's Shackles of Malediction, so being able to remove this debuff will make it easier to survive. Horde, on the other hand, really only have one race worth looking into, and that's Orc. Not only do you gain Blood Fury, which is an excellent offensive cooldown that you can pair with your Pillar of Frost, but you also gain stun reduction in the form of Hardiness, making you a worse kill target for any class that depends on locking you down to score a kill. Overall, between the two factions, none of the Alliance racials really stand out at complementing a DK's strengths or weaknesses that well. Orcs, on the other hand, have the perfect additions to a DK's toolkit, mostly in part to having an additional offensive cooldown that you can stack with Pillar of Frost to make your offensive windows stronger. Next up, we're going to cover what talents you should be using. In the first two rows, Inexorable Assault and Murderous Efficiency pair well together to increase the amount of damage you're able to do with Obliterate, meaning you get the largest increase to your burst damage with these two talents. Next, in the level 30 row, Blinding Sleet would be your default pick in almost every game. This talent makes it significantly easier to set up AoE stuns with your team, especially when playing with a Resto Shaman, as they'll have time to place a Capacitor Totem that the enemy team won't be able to kill during Blinding Sleet, assuming you land a triple blind. Alternatively, in a handful of niche matchups where you simply cannot get value out of Blinding Sleet, you can pick up Asphyxiate. This will generally happen when facing a double caster team where you're just tunneling one target and will struggle to set up triple blinds, most typically against mages. Moving down to the level 35 row, while none of these talents are particularly great, Avalanche stands out as being the best one for the passive increase to your cleave damage. In the level 40 row, Wraith Walk should be your default pick in most matchups, especially when facing teams with consistent and powerful slows or roots. Alternatively, if you're not in need of mobility or simply want slightly more mitigation, you can swap to Permafrost. Next, in the level 45 row, Gathering Storm synergizes well with your Pillar of Frost burst windows where you'll be spamming Obliterate, helping to increase your burst damage. And last up, in the level 50 row, we have what's by far the most important talent, Obliteration. This choice is mandatory for making your burst windows as strong as possible, allowing you to alternate between Frost Strikes and killing machine obliterates during Pillar of Frost. Now moving into the PvP talents. Patch 9.1 has seen a rework to several talents that were previously unused or too strong, leaving Frost DKs with plenty of new viable PvP talents. Your four most commonly used PvP talents are Chill Streak, Strangulate, Spell Warden, and Dome of Ancient Shadow. 
First, Chill Streak plays a pivotal role in your ability to set up kills against teams with a melee. As previously mentioned, you'll look to set up a triple stun with Blinding Sleet, and then unleash a ton of cleave damage with your Pillar of Frost, Remorseless Winter, and Chill Streak once you've locked the enemy team down. Moving on, 9.1 has seen the reintroduction of Strangulate to all DK specs. This talent is excellent for extending CC chains on a healer and making your setups even more deadly. Another new addition to 9.1 is Spell Warden, which gives you the Rune of Spell Warding buff at 100% increased effectiveness without the need to enchant it on your weapon. Not only does this provide some insane mitigation against magic damage, but the casting speed debuff it applies to enemies that attack you makes it an incredibly powerful talent that you will almost always want to use against casters. And whenever you're up against double caster teams or a single caster that deals huge burst damage, so Fire Mages with Combustion, Balanced Druids with Incarnation, or Destruction Warlocks with Dark Soul, you'll generally want to pick up Dome of Ancient Shadow to make your anti-magic zone a more reliable cooldown that your team can rotate through to counter enemy offensives. Beyond that set of four PvP talents that you'll primarily be switching around, there's another handful of PvP talents that are situationally good in different matchups. First, Bitter Chill has its place if you expect to have high up time against a melee or a low mobility caster. This will allow you to keep them snared with Chains of Ice without the need to constantly reapply it, in addition to slightly slowing down their damage by negating some of their haste. Next, Delirium continues to be a decent choice when training mages, warlocks, and monks. This will significantly reduce their mobility and make it much easier for you and your teammates to stick to them. Death's Echo is also a very situational choice, but could be viable in matchups where you value more control and mobility. And last up, we've got two more talents that are even more situational than the previous four, starting with Dark Simulacrum. It can be considered into classes like mages or druids to copy Polymorph or Cyclone, while also slowing down the enemy's attempts at landing that CC, as they may be fearful of letting their cast go through to prevent you from copying them. And the last PvP talent we'll look at, Dead of Winter, can be used in twos to more frequently have access to stuns, as you won't have a DPS partner to help you set up chill streaks. Alright, now that we've covered all of your viable PvP talents, we'll finish this section by providing you with a few builds for the few different types of matchups you'll face. First, when up against a double caster team, you'll generally want to pick up Strangulate, Spell Warden, and Dome of Ancient Shadow. Against a melee caster team, you'll have the choice to drop one of the previous three talents for Chill Streak. And when up against a melee cleave, you'll want both Chill Streak and Strangulate along with one of your situational talents. Delirium is great against monks to limit their mobility. Bitter Chill is then a good baseline choice against most teams. And Death's Echo can be considered for a little more control and mobility. Moving on to Covenants, like many other classes and specs, Death Knights have one Covenant that stands far above the rest as your best choice. As a Necrolord DK, you gain access to Abomination Limb, a very high damaging ability that also offers great zonal control, which you can utilize to set up triple stuns. In addition, given that DKs are not the most durable class around, you benefit a lot from the Covenant signature ability, Fleshcraft, which provides a strong absorb effect that can be channeled before a game starts. Moving on to your Soul Binds, despite having the choice of three, Plague Divisor Merilith easily stands out as the best option. First, we have the Soulbind ability Ooze's Frictionless Coating, which is a simple passive on a 30 second cooldown that procs and absorb whenever you drop below 50% health, assisting in your ability to survive. Ultimate Form is also another great tool for giving you some outplay potential in longer games every time your Fleshcraft comes off cooldown, allowing you to immune incoming crowd control. Now, 9.1, you'll also be getting two new Soulbind abilities, including Undulating Maneuvers, which works to further increase the amount of damage you mitigate, and the final Soulbind ability you'll get this patch is Kevin's Oozling, which will increase your damage by 6% when using Abomination Limb. In addition, it also increases your team's survivability by providing absorbs. Next up, let's take a look at what conduits you should be using. Starting with your potency conduits, Brutal Grasp stands out as the best one as it makes your Abomination Limb a more potent offensive cooldown by increasing its damage. You'll then want to pick up Accelerated Cold as your second potency conduit for more frequent access to Empower Rune Weapon and increase its effect. Then, with access to a new set of conduit slots in 9.1, you'll now be using three potency conduits with Plague Divisor Merilith, with your third potency conduit being Eradicating Blow, which increases the damage of Frost Strike whenever you obliterate. Moving on to your Endurance conduits, with Death Strike being your primary tool for surviving, Insatiable Appetite is a must-have. You'll also want to utilize the new 9.1 Endurance conduit, Condensed Animosphere. At a high item level, this conduit heals for a ton, making it a valuable part of your defensive toolkit. 
You've also got the option of picking up reinforced shell if you want your AMZ to last longer. However, this isn't really recommended as you don't have room to pick it up in most matchups. And last up with your finesse conduits, you'll definitely want to pick up chilled resilience for more frequent access to icebound fortitude, making it a much more reliable cooldown. The only other finesse conduit worth looking at is hardened bones. However, with the recommended path, it's unlikely you'll pick this one up that often. In the end, this leaves your recommended path looking like this. Next, we're going to be covering everything you need to know about how to correctly gear your DK in patch 9.1. First up, let's make sure you understand what your stat priority looks like. Above all else, you want as much versatility as possible. Despite the diminishing returns after 30%, the PvP trinket set bonus to versatility means that you still want to stack this stat. Not only does it increase the damage you deal and healing you do, but it also provides you with some much needed damage reduction in this high paced meta. You'll then want to dump the rest of your stats into Mastery as it provides you with the largest and most consistent increase to your damage. Haste is then next, followed by Crit. However, neither stat is that amazing in PvP, and you would ideally be stacked in full Versa Mastery gear. Now, how exactly should you be gearing your character? Well, you'll more than likely end up in a full set of Conquest PvP gear, so that will be the focus of this gearing section. In terms of priority, your weapon is definitely a big one, so you'll want to save Conquest points and pick it up as early as possible. But beyond that, don't stress too hard about what pieces you buy and in what order. Instead, let your weekly cash determine which slots get filled in for free, and just work around that with Versa Mastery and Versa Haste pieces from the vendor. And although Conquest Points and the weekly Great Vault reward play a large role in how you gear, if you do happen to raid, you could benefit from the Spires of Broken Hope shoulders that drop from Sylvanas at a higher item level than items from the rest of the raid, matching what the 2100 Conquest gear scales up if obtained on Mythic. These shoulders come with Versa and Haste, along with the Domination Socket which can be fitted with a Shard of Kier. Now it does remain to be seen if these shards, which have already been nerfed by 50% in PvP, will be that effective. However, thinking back to resounding protection and impassive visage in BFA, we wouldn't be surprised to see Shard of Kier become an important part of every player's loadout in PvP during this season. Now moving on to Trinkets. Pairing up a Gladiator's Badge with your Pillar of Frost is the most effective way to increase your burst damage and make your 1 minute kill window more dangerous. And although the Gladiator's Emblem is a great defensive option, the recent nerf to it definitely makes it less desirable. In addition, the introduction of the Unchained Gladiator's Shackles of Malediction, which is a throwback to the Maledict Trinket in BFA, has been proving to have its place in the meta as Season 2 has begun. This one is definitely strong against teams without a decurse, and can even be chained with multiple Maledictions by having several players on your team use it. It's for that reason that we generally recommend picking up one of the two offensive trinkets, with Badge being best in almost all scenarios, unless your team prefers to stack Maledictions. And as for your PvP trinket, you'll definitely want to use a Medallion in almost every scenario. The final part of this section is on legendaries. As a Frost DK, you have one standout legendary that plays a huge role in your ability to set up kills. Absolute Zero both reduces the cooldown of your Frostworm's Fury to 90 seconds and also makes it stun those it hits for 3 seconds. This means with Absolute Zero, you're able to set up AoE stun chill streak kill attempts by yourself without always relying on a stun from your teammates. And although this legendary will be used 99% of the time, you might also want to pick up Coltira's Favor for the rare occasions where you're focusing on tunneling one target and don't need access to an AoE stun, something that could occasionally happen when paired up against double caster teams when you don't play with Chill Streak. Last up, we got macros. This section will just cover any important macros you need as a Death Knight. The most important set of macros you'll need are Focus Macros for Mind Freeze, Death Grip, Chains of Ice, Asphyxiate, Strangulate, and Dark Simulacrum. You'll also want a stop attack macro with your blinding sleet to prevent yourself from accidentally breaking it. A cancel or a lichborn macro is also necessary to prevent priests from shackling you when you lichborn their fear. In addition, you should have a pillar of frost and badge macro. And a cast sequence macro for your raised dead and sacrificial pack will let you save a bind. The only other macros worth using are arena 123 macros for mind freeze, chains of ice, and death grip. However, these are not mandatory. Alright guys, that about does it for this one. Remember to head on over to Skillcapped if you're interested in continuing your learning by checking out our arena commentaries and upcoming world class death knight course. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.